How do you prioritize a long list of initiatives for your process improvement project that you don't have sufficient resources for all of them? Well, stay tuned. This is the Six Sigma.org downloadable template called the CNE Matrix. It is available on the Downloads tab at Six Sigma.org. The cause and effect matrix is also known as the CNE Matrix or the XY Matrix. And the XY Matrix or the CNE Matrix is a great tool for prioritizing a long list into a shorter list, in this case of initiatives, that the team would go work on in an effort to improve the process under consideration. So the first thing we do is we start with the process uh, outputs. Uh, what do we want to improve? Now in this particular cell, uh, D8, we always put in what's called our big Y, and our big Y is that one thing, I'll put here big Y, it's that one thing that we must stay focused on and uh, we want to improve and is the focus of the project. So let's suppose it is um, to reduce billing uh, defects. Let's suppose that's our, our big Y. And then uh, adjacent to it we have our little Y or little Y's. And the little Y's, let's suppose in this case it's to reduce uh, billing uh, cycle time. And we might have other little y's that, would, that we would put here and here. And in fact, in many cases, that is, uh, that is the case. Okay. So once we have the big y and our little y's here, we then go up and we want to rank those. Now, the scale we use is 10 to 1, 10 being the most important. And so the big y always gets a score of 10. And the little y's get something less than 10. So I, only, I always only ever have one 10. And I can have a, uh, a multitude of other values associated with the little y's. For illustration purposes, though, I'm going to call this a 6. Now, where do those numbers come from? They come from your voice of customer or some other method you've used to determine what is important to the customer. All right, once I have that, now I'm going to move down into the process inputs, which are the initiatives or the projects or the activities that I intend to undertake or the team intends to undertake to improve the big y and the little y's. So let's suppose that I've got a training program that uh, I, I think would help uh, the problem, the, the big Y. And then I want to automate some sort of uh, uh, data transfer. And then the last thing, I'm going to put in some sort of an error checking system, suppose. Okay. All right. So once I have those listed, and you know, in many projects, of course, there's a very long list here. You can insert rows as necessary. Once I have those uh, three components in place, so the big Y, the little Y, their associated importance level, okay, rating of importance to the customer, and then the initiatives that I intend to or have identified uh, to undertake to improve my big Y, my little Y. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rank each of these against each of the big Y and the little Y's. And the scale I'm going to use is down here at the bottom. So I'm going to, go, I'm going to use a 0, 1, 3, 9. And uh, if I put a 0 in, it means that the, the process input, so that would be this one, is not correlated to the output at all. Uh, one would be moderately, uh, um, moderately uh, associated. Uh, the process input has a moderate effect on the process output or a strong and direct. So let's suppose that the training program uh, has a moderate effect on reducing the billing defects. So in here I would have put a 3, and let's suppose the training program would also reduce the cycle time somewhat, so I'm going to put a 3 in here as well. Now these are subjective, but uh, you would do this as a team. Use the, your subject matter experts and other people knowledgeable about the process. And the team would have had sufficient discussion around each of these initiatives now to understand what they are, the scope of them, and uh, likely their impact on the big Y and the little Y. All right, I'll keep going here. Automating data transfer, that should be data transfer. Automating data transfer, uh, if it has a strong and direct effect on reducing billing defects, then I would put a nine, and let's suppose that's the case. And also it may, might have a moderate effect on, uh, on, on reducing cycle time. And then let's suppose that some sort of error checking system would have a strong and direct effect both on the defects and on the time as well. Now, the way you interpret this is right over here in this column. So I have a score of 144, 108, 48. So let's talk about those numbers first. The number 48 comes from 3 times 10, which is 30, 
plus 3 times 6, which is 18, 30 and 18, 48. And uh, similarly for uh, this row and then this row. Now, the item I'm looking for, the initiative I'm looking for, I want to rank these in, uh, in order of, um, uh, in descending on numeric order. So the first initiative I would like to undertake is an error checking system. Why? Because it has a value of 144. And clearly, if I do that, whatever that is, it would have both a strong and direct effect on my big Y and my little Y. And so obviously, that's uh, what I'd like to do. The second initiative I would like to undertake is the uh, automating the data transfer. It has a strong and direct effect on the big Y, but it only has a moderate effect on the little Y, a score of 108. And then the last thing I would do is the training program. Now, there are times when the scoring is very close and it's hard to uh, discern between uh, initiatives. So for the sake of illustration, I'm just going to make these all the same. So let's suppose we scored it and all three initiatives came out with the same score. Then what you can do is you can use an additional tool contained in the template here, and that is this little implementation and impact matrix. And so you look at each of the initiatives, the training program, and you say, to what extent is it easy or hard to implement? And to what extent would it have an impact on the big Y? Uh, would it be high or low? And let's suppose then that uh, this one turned out to be a one. It would be easy to implement and have an I high impact. Let's suppose that this one was a, a, a two and maybe this was a four, something like that, right? Now, the way then you select uh, the initiatives now is you take them in numeric order. So I'm looking down this list and the, the, the ones that I'm gonna select first for implementation are the ones, then the twos, then the threes, and then the fours, all right? So the fours are hard to implement and would have a low impact and so they are the lowest priority. So that's the CD matrix. It's a wonderful tool for prioritizing a long list of initiatives. It gives the team some objectivity in how to tackle the improvement initiatives, particularly when you don't have enough resources or you need to prioritize your resources. It's a great tool for communicating with the leadership and management in how the team selected the initiatives they selected. And I would encourage you to use it uh, and be creative in its use uh, I've used it in many, many different scenarios. Uh, I really like the tool. It's really helped me. And again, it's available out at SixSigma.org on the Downloads tab. And out there, we also have some online cause and effect matrix training that you can link on and explore as well. Uh, thank you for watching the video, and good luck in your process improvements.